गुरुभ्यो नम व्यास वसीष्ठनता शक्रे पौत्रमकमशम पराशरात्मज वंदे सुकता तम तपो निधि व्यासा विष्णुपय व्यासूपा विष्णवे नमो वै ब्रह्म निधय वासीय नमो नम ओ नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती चो जय मुधीर ये ओ श्रीगुरभ्यो नम Bhishma now has been appointed the commander in chief of the Kaurava army and Karna has decided after Bhishma's public rebuke that Karna will not participate in war as long as Bhishma does not fall so Bhishma leads the army of Kauravas and it's decided that drishtadyumna the son of drupada who was specifically gotten through the process of yagna from the fire for the purpose of killing drona dronacharya as dronacharya defeated drupada and publicly humiliated him So Drishtadyumna is the commander in chief of the Pandava army and Krishna is the Partha Sarathi so he is the charioteer he will also consult or act as a consultant to the Pandavas but will not take part actively in the war fighting against the Kauravas So this parva is called Bhishma parva. Interestingly enough, there is no Yuddha parva in Mahabharata. That's a point to note. So Bhishma parva. In this, uh, both the Kauravas and Pandava army, the Pandavas with seven Akshohinis, and Kauravas with eleven Akshohinis. are arrayed in battle formation ready to war against each other and it's kshatriya dharma to participate in war as a duty as an obligation as a, as a service rendered to the kingdom to the nation and to the world at large the brahmanas render service through knowledge engaging in knowledge kshatriyas render service to the society through engaging in administering justice and hence this is a dharma yuddha fought for the sake of dharma vaishyas serve the society by engaging in economic activities agricultural activities and shudras serve the society by being of service to all the other orders and hence not inferior but a unique service provided by them so it's a functional role based societal model and all the kshatriyas participate except for rukmi and balarama Balarama because he does not want to fight against his own brother Krishna in the Pandavas he supports Duryodhana so he goes on a tirtha yatra and Rukmi because he has been rejected by the Pandavas and the Kauravas because of his haughty arrogant nature 
he insulted Duryodhana as well as the as well as Arjuna. So in Bhishma Parva, we see initially the description of Kurukshetra, where the war is going to happen. It's a flat land with seven vanas and small hillocks and it appears in Jambu, Jambu Dvipa in Bharata Varsha. There are various Dvipas as per Indian geography. It's very interesting to note these even now. So, the battle is going to start. Kauravas and Pandavas, those representing the Kauravas and those in the Pandava army are ready to start battle. And Sri Krishna drives the chariot of Arjuna to the center point, right in front of Bhishma, Drona, Kripa, the elders of the Kaurava army. Arjuna on looking at them falters. He is no longer sure if he should engage in war against his own, his own grandfather, his own gurus, his own brothers, cousins, his own brother-in-laws, his own people. Why should he fight for this? He gets questions. He falters. We all face this question. We start off confidently. We are Arambasuras in uh, Swami Dayananda's words. We start off, Aramba means beginning. So initial enthusiasm is very high. After that, we are filled with anxiety on looking at the insurmountable difficulties, challenges. So we start off enthusiastically and then it tapers off and we give up. Some people give up even before that, even before starting. By listening to others' words, others saying, hey, don't engage in this, it's not good. Dhritarashtra tried this and Yudhishtra dismissed that. So when Sanjaya came for, game as a messenger to Yudhishtra, Yudhishtra dismissed that because he clearly remembered the earlier Yudhishtra would not have dismissed it, would not have, you know, gone ahead with war. So we start off, but before starting off, we hear others' words and we have an inner conflict. Should I start? Should I not start? Doubts, some share. And hence, many give up even before starting. Some, they start off with a lot of enthusiasm, energy. But then as challenges prop up, they give up. There are those few who are clear, who are very clear until the very end. No matter what the challenges, they face the challenges and overcoming those challenges that happen towards their goal. They overcome the challenges and gain strength. The challenges do not weaken them. They gain strength by overcoming those challenges with renewed capabilities. They go towards the goal. Arjuna falters. His major challenge is an emotional flux on seeing his own people arrayed for battle. And hence, because of this emotional flux, he is not able to remember the oaths that he has taken. He is not able to remember the various injustices done to them by Duryodhana and his team. The very same Bhishma, Drona, Kripa supported Duryodhana just because they have eaten the salt of Duryodhana. Is that justice? At that time, before the war, Arjuna was clear, it was Adharma. But now, his memory is weak because of emotional flux. And hence, he shivers and shakes and is not able to raise the Gandiva. And that's where Bhagavan Sri Krishna delivers the Bhagavad Gita, the song of the Lord, 
and it's a beautiful episode in the whole of Bhagavad Gita, you know, whole of Mahabharata. The Mahabharata has got a lot of gems to offer. But Bhagavad Gita is the whole essence of all these. In short, I don't want to expand on the Bhagavad Gita. But if I were to draw what is relevant immediately to us, Bhagavad Gita gives a path of action, undiluted, effective, energetic action, to be of selfless service to all around us in the path of dharma. How can we act even while facing challenges that life throws at us? It can only be when our state of mind is balanced. No matter what the outer fluctuations are, it is like AC. No matter what the outside temperature is, inside is kulu you know. It's cool, comfortable. Likewise, can we maintain our <coughs> mind in a state of equanimity <coughs> so that it's balanced, cool and calm no matter what the experiences that life throws at us, the challenges that we face. Samatvam Yoga Uchyate That means equanimity of mind. Equanimity of mind is yoga, or karma yoga. Skillful action, we plan and execute skillfully, we gain expertise in a certain area and execute it thoroughly. That is also yoga. Yoga ha karma su kaushala. And the very famous statement karmanye vadhikaraste ma faleshu kadachana you'd have heard that shloka in full that's a beautiful episode in the Mahab, you know in the bhagavad gita which talks of action but not over emphasis on the result once you have fixed the goal what is important is that you draw up a plan and act now if we keep on worrying about the result then out of that anxiety we will not have the energy to act now decisively in fact only if we act decisively now can we actually reap the fruit of that action later so the effort that we put in is in our hands the result that arises out of that effort is not exactly in our hands this understanding this clear appreciation will lead to decisive action and yet a you know, state of being beyond action, wherein one is not touched. There are 18 chapters and each chapter is named a yoga in Bhagavad Gita. I would definitely recommend that each one of us read the Bhagavad Gita. In fact, it has inspired all the world leaders. Mahatma Gandhi famously said, every day he is able to meet the challenges of his life only because of the Bhagavad Gita, the inspiration provided by the Bhagavad Gita. Not a day goes by in his, went by in his life without referring to the Bhagavad Gita. So that's how powerful the message of the Bhagavad Gita is. And it's so deep that every time you look at it, new inspiration dawns in you, new understanding dawns in you. So that's how powerful the Bhagavad Gita is. So the war starts, full-blown war. At the end of the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna, after revealing his Vishwarupa, Arjuna is convinced that his dharma as a Kshatriya is to fight 
for this dharma yuddha so he is convinced about it and he fully engages in his dharma as a warrior he has trained all his life just for this moment and he is not unjustly killing others let's see a beautiful aspect about uh, the indian tradition the yuddha dharma was so very well evolved there was a dharma in even yuddha so let's say there is a playground nearby here there is the let's assume that that is the kurukshetra and there is a war going on there the mahabharata yuddha is happening there here i would still be able to engage with you in discussion because our dharma is not that of a kshatriya we are engaging in knowledge so it's it is towards brahmanas there would be a full fledged war going there and yet here we would be engaging in our discussions nearby the farmers would be engaging in their profession in their dharma the children and women would be doing what they do children would be playing because it's their dharma to play so it's a beautiful very evolved mature civilization that we are looking at through the mahabharata not like current times where you have the wars up accord and yet if a war happens can anybody be safe god forbid war but nobody can be safe so the war begins full blown and bhishma has told uh, duryodhana that he will kill 10000 warriors not any warrior but ratas so warriors on chariots so there are warriors on elephant back there are warriors on horses there are warriors on chariots there are foot soldiers there are so many different types of warriors and the yuddha dharma prescribes that a warrior be equally matched so those fighting if one is on foot another is also on foot so they both fight engage in fight and they announce their lineage so that the other person knows who they are fighting with if they feel they are not their equal then they would not fight with them all these details are available in mahabharata so that is part of yuddha dharma you just you just don't wantonly kill you murder butcher warriors you just don't do that but in mahabharata we see that was towards the dwapara yuga and already confusion had set in and hence we see large scale massacre now it's unimaginable and everyone knows that if shikandan comes before bhishma he will not aim at shikandan he will not fight him who has been transformed from a her so arjuna protects shikandan and tries to penetrate into the army so that shikandan can face bhishma the whole of duryodhana's instruction is in terms of protecting bhishma and bhishma eliminates more than 10000 ratas every day so 10 days he lasts 10000 ratas he kills every day if you just do a minor calculation you will see that it's superhuman to even do that and we are not even speaking of arjuna in fact before the start of the war arjuna has asked by yudhishthira how long will it take for you to eliminate the entire enemy 
and Arjuna proudly claims not even a moment. That's how powerful his skills are. While Bhishma and Drona say it will take us a month to eliminate the enemy, Arjuna confidently says not even a moment. No. So Bhishma himself kills more than 10,000 warriors in a single day. 10,000 ratas. If you calculate the time period of a day, it's said that uh, the night is from Sandhya Kala to Sandhya Kala. That is twilight to dawn. It's about uh, 9 Yama. So the daytime extends to about uh, 12 to 15 hours. So you can roughly calculate, if you, are, you can arrive at a ballpark figure of about 1000 people eliminated every hour. Roughly. In an hour, 60 minutes. So you can do the math yourself. So you can see it's superhuman archery. Bhishma is capable of that. He is Atirata, Maharati. Finally, Shikhandan manages to place himself right before Bhishma. Because Bhishma has to be eliminated. He's killed too many people. And if it goes on like this, the Pandavas are sure, Yudhishthira is sure of defeat. And hence, the night before the tenth day, Yudhishthira goes to the Kaurava camp along with his brothers, Anam. And hence he is let in. He goes and prostrates before Bhishma and asks him, how can you be killed? And Bhishma large-heartedly responds, the only way I can be killed is when I don't fight. And that can be done only by placing Shikandan before me. I will not fight him. And that's what exactly Yudhishthira and his team planned. And placing Shikandan in front, Arjuna targets his arrows towards Bhishma and Bhishma falls, the great Bhishma, Devavrata, Ganga's son, falls. But it's still not time for him to leave his body because he has this boon from his father Shantanu, saying that he can leave his body whenever he chooses. So death cannot approach him until he wishes for it. And Bhishma has grown old and uh, tired of life all the time being a caretaker of the Kuru lineage. So he really wishes to leave. He's fought well. He's paid off his debt to Dhritarashtra and Duryodhana because he has eaten their salt. So to speak, this is, a, this is figurative. Not just literate, literally, but figuratively as well. So finally Bhishma falls and the whole war stops. Everybody comes towards Bhishma's side and he wants an appropriate, he's fallen in such a way that there is not a single point in his body which is not covered by arrows. There is the super natural archery of Arjuna and he falls and hence he is, in a, he is on a bed of arrows but his head is unsupported so he asks Arjuna for a pillow others run and bring, bring soft pillows he is disgusted at those warriors are you all Kshatriyas? he asks Arjuna finally hey give me a fitting pillow and immediately Arjuna shoots his arrows in such a way that they form a headlock. They lock his head from falling down. And that becomes the warrior's pillow that Bhishma has sought. And then he wants water to quench his thirst. Others run and bring water. And again he is disgusted. He turns his head face away. And immediately Arjuna summons the Varuna weapon 
and brings water. A gush, a spring from the earth where Arjuna's arrow struck and that gives solace to the parched throat of Bhishma. But Bhishma is not ready to leave. Disembodied voices from heaven speak. It is still Dakshinayana. Don't leave. It's inauspicious to leave during Dakshinayana. The southward movement of the sun. If you look at suns, you know, sunrise, sunset, if you observe over a period of time, they keep shifting. You will clearly see a northward movement that is called Uttarayana. And then a southward movement that is called Dakshinayana. So Uttarayana starts when the sun enters the first degree of Capricorn, Makara. Or what is popularly, general, you know, popularly celebrated as Pongal or Makara Shankaranti. So he waits for Uttarayana to begin before he leaves his body. So Bhishma has fallen. Now Drona is appointed commander-in-chief by Duryodhana. Drona promises that he will capture Yudhishthira. Because if Yudhishthira is captured, then Duryodhana can again play a game of dice, defeat him and send him back into exile again. And hence the war is won without having been fought. That is Duryodhana's plan. And Drona, his reputation at stake, but still he feels obliged to listen to Duryodhana. Duryodhana again and again uses harsh words, barbs against Drona. Drona feels insulted because he is not a Kshatriya, he is a Brahmana. Against a Brahmana you use one harsh word, they feel disgusted. They spike up. Drona is that sensitive. And hence, he decides to capture Yudhishthira. But as much as he tries, he is unable to. Somehow or the other. Once he is very close towards capturing Yudhishthira, but Yudhishthira runs away. Arjuna is wantedly taken away by the Trigartas, army of Trigartas, into some remote corner of Kurukshetra. So that Drona can capture Yudhishthira. But Satyaki defeats his purpose. And finally even Yudhishthira runs away from the field of war. And hence Drona cannot aim at him. Finally Dro Drona masterminds a plan to capture an Atirata, Maharati. Because he cannot stand Duryodhana's taunts, barbs, wordy barbs. That go penetrate his heart. And hence he forms the Padma Vyuha or Chakra Vyuha, a formation, a war formation, a battle formation, wherein not all Pandava warriors know how to penetrate that formation. And whoever is locked in into that formation is almost sure. It's going to be fatal. Only Arjuna, Krishna, Pradyumna know how to get into the formation and get out of the formation. Abhimanyu has learned about this when Arjuna teaches this, narrates about this to Uttara. Not Uttara. Subhadra. When Abhimanyu is in Subhadra's womb. But before he can learn how to exit the formation, Subhadra falls asleep and Arjuna stops. And hence, Abhimanyu knows how to penetrate into the formation but does not know how to exit. And now Arjuna is far away. The Pandavas are restless because they are not able to do anything and they are getting killed in large numbers. So Yudhishthira pleads Abhimanyu, commands Abhimanyu, pleadingly commands Abhimanyu. Only you 
can penetrate this formation. Please do so. Otherwise, our honor is lost. Abhimanyu says, I don't know how to exit the formation. But he readily agrees to Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira and Bhima provide wordy support to Abhimanyu, saying, you just enter it, we will follow you right behind you. And Abhimanyu penetrates it at an angle to the formation. But as soon as he penetrates, as he has entered, the formation closes and the others cannot enter. And they are held at bay by Jayadrata, who has gotten a boon from Shiva that he will be able to hold the other Pandavas except Arjuna. So he has this boon and he holds them at bay successfully. They are not able to believe it. The weakling Jayadrata. He is not weak by our standards. He is weak by Pandava standards. This Jayadrata holds the Pandavas, the four Pandavas at bay. Even Satyaki at bay. And they are not able to penetrate. And our Abhimanyu is racing ahead. And the path of his is full of bodies. Of fallen warriors, of fallen horses, elephants. And he reaches the center. Where there are six Maharatis. Karna, Drona, Dushasana and others, Kripa and there is this 16 year old lad Abhimand fighting bravely and they are no match to his skill, he is so wonderful. Finally Duryodhana has had enough and hence Karna when Abhimanyu is not, is fighting with someone else, from his back, he cuts the string of Abhimanyu's bow repeatedly. And one by one, Abhimanyu's all the weapons are lost. And finally, he is ready to face others with the chakra, the wheel of his chariot. And finally, Durmarshana, the son of Dushasana deals the death blow to Abhimanyu and Abhimanyu falls. It's a very tragic incident. A very unwarrior like behavior. Completely in violation of the Yuddha Dharma. And the Kauravas celebrate. While they should have been sad that such an episode they have out of frustration they have done it at least they should have been remorseful but they celebrate end of day when Arjuna reaches the Pandava camp everyone is downcast and Arjuna senses that Abhimanyu is missing and he learns that Abhimanyu is no, no more. And he's, he is just not able to bear it. His favorite son, Abhimanyu, is no longer there. He's just not able to bear it. Krishna provides him with solace. Others dare not. Others feel guilty. Yudhishthira, Bhima, we sent that child in while he clearly said, I don't know how to exit. It was our folly that we did this. So they are not able to face Arjuna. While Krishna clearly says, death comes to any being that is born. It's after all the body that is fallen. But in his angst, Arjuna takes a terrible oath that he will kill Jayadratha who was in a way responsible for the killing of Abhimanyu. 
because Chaitratha celebrates his victory so much that it really pierces Arjuna and hence he vows to kill Jayadratha. The news reaches the Kaurava camp and they take elaborate measures to protect Jayadratha. Arjuna vows that by sunset tomorrow I will have killed Jayadratha otherwise I will kill myself by walking into fire and hence Duryodhana and his team are exceptionally happy but on seeing this on hearing this Jayadratha is exceptionally frightened and hence he resolves to run away but Duryodhana this is a wonderful opportunity where all that you need to do is protect Jayadratha till sunset and you can eliminate the only chance of success that the Pandavas have on their side that's a fighting Arjuna you eliminate Arjuna you have won the war so Duryodhana convinces Jayadratha of all their support that only aim to protect Jayadratha and Drona hence forms a Vyuha a formation a battle formation that is half shakata which means a vehicle a cart half padma and in the stamen of the padma lotus is a needle the eye of the needle is where jayadratha is located it's such a difficult formation to penetrate in fact it's said in the mahabharata that this entire formation from beginning to the eye of the needle is 48 miles in length so many warriors and all that Arjuna has got is from sunrise to sunset what an impossible task and hence Krishna is like oh you fool Arjuna what have you done but Arjuna has given his word he cannot go back and hence Krishna resolves to save Arjuna So in their subtle bodies, they visit Shiva himself. Every night, Arjuna has the ritual of washing the feet of Krishna and offering flowers and serving the feet of Krishna. When they reach Kailasha, they find that whatever has been offered at Krishna's feet is there with Shiva. Because Krishna is the greatest devotee of Shiva and everything reaches Shiva. In another story we find that Shiva is the greatest devotee of Narayana, Vishnu. So it's all interlinked and there is no contradiction. That's the beauty of it. So there, again Arjuna brings into memory Pashupatastra and Shiva directs them to the Manasa lake and there after a small test the Pashupatastra again comes into Arjuna's possession. With the Pashupatastra the next day he eliminates Jayadratha and it's a fiery sequence, it's an impossible task but finally Arjuna manages to kill Jayadratha and how it's almost the end of day Krishna sees it's almost sunset but still there's a long way to go so he creates an illusion with his yoga yoga shakti yoga maya wherein it appears dark and hence all the warriors celebrate in the Kaurava camp that it's dark now Arjuna is defeated at that moment Jayadratha raises his head Krishna points it out to Arjuna and Arjuna shoots his arrow and Jayadratha's head is taken away from his trunk Krishna further instructs Arjuna let the head not touch the ground let it fall off fall into the lap of Jayadratha's father 
and it so happens his father is meditating by the side of Kurukshetra in a forest. Jayadratha's head lands on his father's lap. He is startled and he raises up and the head falls down and Jayadratha's father's head is blasted into thousands of pieces because he has a boon that if his son's head, the person who makes his son's head touch the ground, his head would be blasted into a thousand pieces. So Krishna sees all this. He is known as a Trikala Jnani. He knows the past, present, future of all beings in the entire universe. He is even beyond the creator. Yet, he is created and live and kicking. You know? After that, Krishna releases his Yoga Maya. And again, people see that it's only now sunset. They are aghast. What a tragedy. Now Arjuna is again fighting. And the war continues into the night. It continues into the night. As long as Bhishma was there, he was a pure Kshatriya. He would not allow the war to continue into the night. Because sunset, the warriors need to retire, take rest. In fact, it is said that they used to have dinner together. During daytime, it's war, full-fledged war. Nighttime, they party together. It's party time, you know. But Drona is a Brahmana turned Kshatriya. He's all energy without the subtleties of the Kshatriya, the emotions of the Kshatriya. And hence, he pushes his warriors harder and harder and harder. There are these managers these days who push their you know, workers harder and harder and harder without giving them inspiration. Bhishma would inspire them. Drona makes them fearful does not inspire them and pushes them and hard so into the night it continues and Arjuna really stands out one other warrior stands out and he is Gadot Gaja the Rakshasa son of Bhima he really does extreme harm to the Kauravas that Duryodhana almost wonders if by sunrise any warrior in his camp would be left alive. And hence, Karna is forced to, do, to use his Shakti, the weapon that he got from Indra and which he had preserved for Arjuna. He is forced to use it against, against Gatot Gaja and Gatot Gaja dies. The entire Pandava army is saddened. There is only one person laughing and dancing hysteriously and that's Sri Krishna. He hugs Arjuna again and again. Oh Arjuna, you have been saved because he was sure as long as there is Shakti in Karna's hands, any moment Arjuna could die but no longer. The Shakti has left Karna's hands. And Karna also loses hope because he knows if he does not have Shakti, not possible to eliminate Arjuna. Now Drona fights really bad. That is really good for Duryodhana, but bad for the Pandavas. The Pandavas are in dire straits and hence Sri Krishna use, employs a stratagem. He asks Bhima to kill Ashwatthama. Ashwatthama, the elephant. Bhima kills Ashwatthama and proudly announces so that Drona can hear. Ashwatthama is dead. Now Drona does not believe Bhima fully because he is an emotional person. Who Bhima is an emotional person not always stable in his emotions. So he approaches Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira has agreed 
with Sri Krishna that this is the only way to eliminate Drona. Otherwise, they are done. So he says, Ashwatthama is dead. The elephant. He adds as a rejoined. Drona hears Ashwatthama is dead and he loses hope. Why should he be alive if his only son, if his precious son, the son for whom he had you know, actually gone to Bhishma, the son for whom he had gone to Drupada for his share of the kingdom, the son for whom he had defeated Drupada through Arjuna, the son for whom he had actually lived all along with Duryodhana, quoting infamy. That only son is dead. Why? There is no longer any reason for him to be alive. But still he fights on. And finally, the rishis, Brahma rishis, including Vishwamitra, ask him to give up weapons. And finally, Drona gives up his weapons and sits in meditation, in prayer. He wants to give up his body. Drishtadyumna seizes this opportunity and beheads Drona, carries him by his hair and dashes him here and there, which is a great insult and an insult that you cannot offer to your own guru. Dronacharya is the guru of Drishtadyumna. To everybody's shock and disbelief, Arjuna cannot believe it that Drona has to meet such an end. But a few see Drona's spirit reaching directly to Brahmaloka. But very few see it. Others see only the body that has fallen and the great insult offered to the body of Dronacharya. Ashwatthama does not take it lightly. Later, he avenges this death. That we will look at it later. So Dronacharya has fallen. Bhishma has fallen. After Bhishma's fall, actually Karna enters the scene. After Drona's fall, Karna is made the commander-in-chief. He really strikes at the Pandavas and he is fired. Nobody is able to handle the fire called Karna. And then finally Arjuna is placed on a one-on-one -on -one combat with Karna. Even the Celestials, even Shiva, Brahma themselves come arrayed in their cars, celestial cars, to witness this fight between Karna and Arjuna. And the whole universe seems divided, polarized. Some supporting Karna, some supporting Arjuna. Finally, Surya and Indra, the parents of Karna and Arjuna, go and ask Brahma and Shiva, who is it that will be victor? And they decisively say it will be Arjuna. Because where there is Krishna, there is Dharma. Where there is Dharma, there is victory. And Krishna always sides along with Dharma. Karna is on the wrong side. Though he is an awesome being, he is on the wrong side. On the side of a Dharma. The battle goes on. Everybody is looking at that. Stopping the entire war. And finally, when Karna sees that he is not able to invoke the Brahmastra, his astras fail him. Before that, he has this astra that he has saved. And Ashwasena, the one, the Naga, who was the son of Takshaka, who escaped the Kandava Daha, Kandava Vana, when it was consumed by Agni with the help of Krishna and Arjuna. Ashwasena escaped. And he was cursed by Arjuna that he will be infamous throughout the world. Because he did not fight them and escape. He just ran away from it. Mayasura also escaped. And the other birds 
Saringika birds. They escape. Mayasura built the Maya Sabha, which in one way was the cause of this war. It was an important turning point. Ashwasena escaped and now he wants to take revenge against Krishna and Arjuna, both together. So he enters the arrows of Karna. Shalya is initially requested to be the charioteer of Karna. After a long debate and Duryodhana's pleading, Shalya agrees. Shalya is true to his words to Yudhishthira and he keeps pricking Karna's ego. And hence Karna cannot fight with full concentration, full, full vigor. Shalya asks Karna to aim at the heart of Arjuna, the arrow in which Asvashena has gotten. The spirit of Asvashena has empowered this arrow. But Karna says, I have already aimed at the head and no true warrior, no true Kshatriya will aim twice and will not use the same arrow twice, same type of arrow. So he aims at the head of Arjuna and just in the nick of time, Krishna presses hard with his toe the floor of the chariot and it goes into the earth and hence Arjuna who is also called Kiriti because he has a a diadem deck, you know, uh, diadem, you know. It's not necessary for all, you know, warriors to have diadems. They may just have turbans. But Arjuna is called Kiriti because he has a diadem given by Indra himself when he goes to Indra Loka. Now that is burnt to ashes by this arrow where Ashwasena has gotten it and Arjuna is saved. Talaki vandhu talapa oda pochu is a very popular saying in Tamil. That means, uh, you know, what came to your head went away with just the uh, you know, head gear and did not scar the head. So again Ashwasena tries to enter Karna's arrow. Now Karna becomes alert. He says, who are you? Ashwasena reveals himself and says, I will assist you. I will try, you know, I will help you kill Arjuna. You just let me enter your arrow. And Karna rejects him. I don't need anybody's help. And Ashwasena himself flies at Arjuna and he is cut into so many pieces by Arjuna and meets his end. Ashwasena, the Naga, meets his end. Then Karna is not able to invoke Astras because he, the curse of his Guru manifests. And finally the curse of the Brahmana also manifests and his wheel gets stuck into the earth. He tries to lift it out and he appeals to the good sense, the sense of Dharma in Arjuna. Arjuna is also called Vibhatsu. Vibhatsu means one who is always fair in war. One who does not use deceitful means in war. Karna says, I am stuck. I am without weapons. Don't aim your arrows. And Arjuna hesitates. Krishna points out to him, how is it, Karna, that you killed this child Abhimanyu? At that time, did you not remember Dharma? Now you are speaking of Dharma? Krishna rebukes him harshly. He points out the various mistakes that Karna performed over the ages. Be uh, the beginning of Vanaparva, Karna you know, takes up an army and tries to harm the Pandavas, who are harmless for spending that time in Manavasa. Was that dharma? 
He was the one who goaded Dushasana into insulting Draupadi. Was that Dharma? There are so many instances that Karna was not Dharmic. And hence, Arjuna releases his arrow and beheads Karna. And Karna falls. And there is a heavenly shower that pours. Because Karna, the great hero, has fallen. And the spirit of Karna merges with Surya, the Adityas, of which he is a part. Abhimanyu's spirit merges with Chandra, the moon god, Soma, of which Abhimanyu is Amsha. Likewise, we see so many Devas have born into the land. So many Asuras have been born. And this war is not just between human mortals but between the devas and asuras who have taken birth in the mission of Sri Krishna. After Karna's fall, Duryodhana has almost lost heart. Then he approaches Shalya to be the commander-in-chief. Shalya does a very good job but finally he is eliminated by Yudhishthira. Shalya is killed and so is Shakuni killed by Nakula and Uluka by Sahadeva as per their votes that they undertook before, before the war. The Pandavas are victorious and Duryodhana escapes. Duryodhana is not one who fights in the forefront of, of his army. He always depended on Bhishma, then Drona, then Karna to bring victory. He could never fight for himself and bring victory. He was sure of that. So he escapes unseen and the whole field is strewn with bodies. The gore of war is tremendous. This is the 18th day, 18 full-blown days of war, large-scale massacre. The Pandavas have lost so many people. The Kauravas have lost many people, almost everybody. So Duryodhana sees that he can no longer win. Victory is not on his side. So he goes and immerses himself into a lake and creates an illusion as if the lake is ice solid. The Pandavas search for Duryodhana because almost all the hundred sons of Dhritarashtra have been eliminated by Bhima but for Duryodhana and Bhima has taken an oath that he will kill all the uh, Kauravas, the hundred brothers. Only Yuyutsu who is on the side of the Pandavas because during the start of the war, Yudhishthira actually goes and seeks the blessings of Bhishma, Drona, Kripa, right in the you know, beginning of the war, when the two, you know, two armies are arrayed, Yudhishthira actually goes and seeks the blessings. That shows his humility, his greatness. At that time, he asks if there is any warrior in Kaurava side who would like to fight for Yudhishthira. And Yuyutsu actually defects from the Kaurava side to the Pandava side. Yuyutsu is the son of Dhritarashtra from a Vaishya wife, not from Gandhari. So the Pandavas go in search of Duryodhana, but they cannot find him anywhere. Ashwatthama. Kripa and Kritavarma know that Duryodhana is there and they go in secret to meet Duryodhana. A group of hunters discover this. 